not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true, and he knows that he is telling the truth, that you also may believe. In the holy name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Romans prided themselves on adopting Greek culture, language, philosophy, and architecture. If they had been consistent, they would have also executed their prisoners by poison. The Phoenicians were those who executed by crucifixion as a more effective form of suppression. The Romans had done it so often, they had developed it into an art form. As we say, practice makes perfect. For the soldiers, waiting out crucifixion was another boring military detail. Throwing dice to divide the clothing of the dying man was, for them, like playing poker. Playing games relieves boredom. Ask any parents taking their children on a car trip. But something more important was happening in this crucifixion than just another tiresome execution. A soldier pierced the side of the dead body and immediately water and blood came out. It was a strange occurrence. That was so strange that one of the witnesses took an oath that he had actually seen it. He who saw it has borne witness. His testimony is true and he knows that he tells the truth that you may believe. Do you usually take an oath about a trivial thing? And what was the truth that was so important that we believe? The bleeding of a man's dead body is hardly an occasion for an oath or a belief. Perhaps something unusual happened. But it was hardly as miraculous in the same way as, say, Jesus turning water into wine. There was a medical explanation, but the ancients didn't know it. That lance that the soldier stuck, it went through both the heart and the sack that was filled with water around the heart. Still, the evangelist who witnessed the pouring out of the water and the blood thought it was so important that he swore that it really happened. His testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth. Standing there were the beloved disciple, the mother of our Lord, and the soldiers standing at the temple of God, at the most important church service the world has ever experienced. Golgotha had become a ground more sacred than Sinai, and the cross more holy than even the burning bush. The crucified man was God's high priest, offering himself as God's sacrificial lamb in the temple that is his own body. Here was the holy of holies of a temple greater than Solomon's. They were standing just on the other side of the curtain. Jesus was at one and the same time God's high priest, God's temple, and God's sacrificial lamb. What the witnesses thought was the end of Jesus then was really his triumph hour. In a matter of hours, he would raise the destroyed temple in a moment of resurrection, and with that, we who believe in him would also become living stones. The Son of Man had been lifted up on the mountain of the Lord and was now, as promised, drawing all men to himself. All the prophets from Adam To John the Baptist, they were there. Through the eyes of the beloved disciple and the mother of our Lord, the whole church throughout the world and at all times and places was there, gazing upon divine miracle. This was not simply just another crucifixion. This was the greatest Passover ever celebrated. It was the last Passover But it was the Passover that would never end. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. 
Now, as we heard, there is a Passover regulation that required that the lamb be unblemished, or not a bone could be broken. This was especially true for the lamb that God himself had selected for a sacrifice, and who was, of course, God himself. God's final and everlasting Passover had to be done flawlessly. And the words, it is finished, signify that the sacrifice in heaven had been completed, and God's people on earth could be drawn through the pierced body of the Son of God into heaven. The soldier with the lance became then a sort of assisting deacon at the high altar of the cross. The body of the crucified victim had to be kept intact since this Lamb of God was going to be placed on altars of countless churches over and over as the perfect and pure sacrament. The wound in the side had to be inflicted quickly and with precision, and immediately there came out water and blood. The sacraments of baptism and Holy Communion required flowing water and flowing blood. In the moment of the cross, the church was being born and washed and presented to Christ as the pure and spotless as he himself was. And so in the death of the Paschal victim, ancient Israel had come to an end, and now there is a new Israel. That's you, the Church of Christ, coming into existence. There would be no more Passovers, for the one Passover of Christ who offered himself up to God was the eternal, everlasting sacrifice. Those who had been baptized into Moses by the cloud and by the sea were now being baptized into Christ by the river of water flowing from his side. Those searching the heavenly Jordan now had found it. Those who were fed by God in the wilderness were now feeding on God himself. Here was Christ, the new Adam, giving life from his side to the new Eve, the Holy Church, you, his pure bride. There at Golgotha, Israel was transformed into the church, and the Passover was transformed into the supper of our Lord. Without word and sacraments, there is no true and complete worship of God. But there was Christ, God's eternal word in the flesh, preaching from his cross a sermon that no apostle or preacher could ever preach. There were the sacraments flowing in endless streams from his body, flooding the corners of the world with everlasting salvation. If you look at some of the ancient artwork of this scene, those artists have tried to paint angels into it, capturing, on the one hand, into the baptismal font, the water, and into a chalice, the blood streaming from our Savior's side. Probably had in mind Jesus' interaction with the Syrophoenician woman. Crumbs might fall from the master's table, but that precious blood and water which brings salvation that could never be spilled on profane ground. So if you look at that art, you'll see flying seraphim covering their eyes before the sacramental mysteries as they cry to one another, Holy is God, the Lord of Sabaoth. Holy is God, the Lord of Sabaoth. Holy is God, the Lord of Sabaoth. But that sacred water, which no man nor angel dare profane, flowed from the throne of God's cross, and it benefits you, because it's washed guilty consciences clean from sin. So also the blood flowing from the throne of God's cross has quenched the thirst of sinners who abandon themselves in the wilderness of their sins. That's what happens. Every baptized person is taken to the cross and plunged into the endless river still streaming from the victim's side. That's what happens. Every communing Christian is drinking from the blood, the blood that streamed from his side. All Christians who have ever lived still stand at that cross 
and still sing out with John the Baptist, O Christ, the Lamb of God that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. On earth, we shall not get closer to heaven than the wounded side of our Redeemer. And in heaven, we shall gaze uninterrupted in joy at that wound out of which pours for us our salvation. In another place, the evangelist John spoke of the miracle of the cross. He said, This is Jesus Christ. He came not only with the water, but he came by water and blood. So now we have three witnesses to tell us who Jesus Christ really is. The water of baptism, the blood of communion, and the Holy Spirit. And all three find their fulfillment in Jesus. It's true that Lent and now Holy Week is a sad time for us Christians, especially even this day. But it was actually God's triumphant hour. Today is a day of joy. It is good. The evangelists tell us that in the hour of his death, the weakened victim shouted out with a loud voice. In death, the weakened victim became God's victor and champion. The sacrifice was over. He had won. And now the time of sacramental celebration had begun. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. He who saw bore witness, and his testimony is true, and he knows that he tells the truth, that you may believe. In the holy name of Jesus, amen.